absolutely spot on. Uh, the, the children. The, um, here's the thing: just to they've separated colors, creeds, religions. 400 miles from here in Scotland, and they used to have the caravantes up there. That was battling the. Um, the, the Pope, basically. They, they won many battles, but lost one. And guess what they did with the, the prisoners? They put them into boats and sent them to the West Indies for slaves. So it doesn't matter about colour, it doesn't matter about creed, they treat us all the same. So. Right, I think Stuart is quite uh, in at the bit here. A young Hello again everybody, um, I've been given a short slot here, somebody may ask me to jump in. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Can somebody give me a cup of tea while I'm here? Is that possible? Can you get me a cup of tea? Somebody? Yeah. One sugar, please. Um, okay, I've got about 30 subjects here for you this time. For those who don't know me, my name's Stuart Russell. And my Skype name is H E C H E hyphen Echelonic. E C H E L O N I C. Echelonic means the wave in front of the boat. I know, flatter myself sometimes, but anyway. <laughs> Here we go. So, what I've knocked together since I've been here is basically, I'm going to talk about your favourite subject. Now, anybody who's not listening will naturally be interrupting and talking in the background. And they agree by tacit agreement and acquiescence that if they're going to talk and interrupt this seminar, they agree to make a hundred pound donation into the bond here or leave the room. Do you want me to repeat that in the background on my left? We have a tacit agreement apart from the catering which would be allowed. We've got four in there, so we've got 400 quid. Great, we've got 400 quid so far. Anybody else want to make a donation? Carry on talking. And then I'm going to bring you up here because you think you've got something to gossip about that's more important than what's going on here and you're going to hold the floor. And I'm going to question you and see your depth of knowledge. Right, let's go on. Your favourite subject. Now, I told him earlier I know what his favourite subject is. And I would say I know the majority of you what your favourite subject is. Any clues? Any answers? <laughs> Who said that? Come on, I'm listening to you. What are you going to say? What's your favourite subject? Maths. Maths. <laughs> You're close. Anybody else? Money. Money. Ah, that might sound like I know what you're attached to and what's running you in the background. Aha, we'll come to that subject, but... When I did the last seminar, last talk here, there were a few, thanks very much and kindly to Salon here, who kindly put it up. As I just had 1,500 hits in the last few weeks now. And people asked me to do a seminar, so I've arranged a seminar in Dublin at the end of the month and I got so much information it's going to be three days camping is about camping for a hundred and room for two hundred and there's a video room and it's licensed so no notice behave yourselves if you're coming and I'm also arranging uh, swings for the kids uh, hoopla coconut shire uh, fire walking okay Sorry? Elephants. I don't know about that. Circus. We're going to have lots of entertainment in the evenings as well. We're going to have. And we're going to have three days of intensive, okay? If you're up for it. 
and all money raised is going to go into the community and we're going to be looking at building domes of the world, you can look at it online, it's a balloon you blow up, about 20 foot high, covering box like, let the balloon down in three days, you've got a home. Okay, and we're looking at doing the home with aquaponics and solar power, I used to be in that once upon a time, and all a whole variety of things, shops in the community, and all the people who would get homeless will get the option, you know, who are in the circles. Anyway, that's by the by. Your favourite subject. Your favourite subject is you. The question is, can you get you out of the way of you? Now, I'm not here to talk to your ideas, your opinions, or your judgments. I want to talk to that part of you that's here now. Have I got your attention? Are we listening? Now, did anybody notice me create the trust when I got up here? Anybody see it? Yeah. Where? Where was the trust? Uh, a contract between the audience and the speaker. That could be one. Anybody else see any other trust I created? Cup of tea. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. The offer. And the acceptance. The acceptance. Now, is the contract complete? Given that they fulfilled the terms? Anybody? Is it complete? Witnesses. A wedding signature. Is it complete? Can we take a vote on it? Is it complete? Yes or no? Yes. Hands up for yes. No complete. Okay, for if it's no, who give me some why it's not complete? No. You, you haven't given us anything yet. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't drunk it. You'll get my approval when I drink it. <laughs> Don't be attached. And that's part of this conversation. Implied within the cup of tea is the trust that it hasn't been poisoned. Okay? Now we have trust. <laughs> we have trustability. And we have untrustworthiness. Now, hands up, who doesn't want to be around people that you don't feel safe with or trust? Who wants to be around people that they feel safe around and trust? Exactly. So, we want to feel that we're not going to get stabbed in the back by people in our space when our energy is going nuts and we wonder why. So, every day in our lives, what do we have? Relationship and communication. So, it's my intention to give you something to go away with, as always, that leaves you touched, motivated, inspired, and tools that you can use. So, I'm going to give you some bits on conversation and communication, which I'll go into a lot more in Ireland. In Ireland, I'll be teaching everything that your parents, school, uni, and society didn't teach you about love, relationship, work, money, and alternative law solutions. Big subjects. You'll come out of there completely transformed. You won't come out of there with power. And if you think you're going to come there looking for answers, you're not going to get answers either. What I guarantee you will get is insights. And out of those insights, you will gain your own empowerment. Everybody's speaking about power. In my world, power is a very misconstrued word. It's got nothing to do with domination, manipulation, or control. An example of power, true power, is Gandhi, Martin Luther King, Kennedy, having things happen naturally. I was with a friend last night. He came over to get some documents from me. He says, Stu, it's all about balance, give and take. I said, yeah, you're absolutely right. 
He says, you know something? I went to the pub the other night and I had a glass of wine. And it was under the level. I said, you're talking about that consistent complaint we all live with. Do you want to give up? I said, he said, no, no, no. But yes, it's true what you're saying. There is that complacent complaint that even on that level below the level, you know you get this direct experience that you feel short-changed. I said, yeah, I'm not saying He says, so I thought, by the by, I'll let it go, and I'll say, okay, trust the universe. He says, you'll never guess what happened. He says, what? I said, what? He says, the next time I went in the park, guess what happened? I said, I don't know. He said, he gave me, mysteriously, more than the level. So it balanced out. And he said, the lesson I got from this was, don't be attached to being greedy. Trust the universe what you're getting. And so many people don't. You know, they may not like the conversation. They may not like the circumstances. So they'll take this position of, I want to control it to be another way. So by taking that position that you want to control it to be another way, rather than accepting it and being with the way it is, okay with it, you validate the opposite position that you don't have control. Because if you had control, you wouldn't be taking that position. The question is, what are you going to do with this control when you get it? Nothing except become righteous. And do nothing with that righteousness except destroy a relationship. Now, do you want to be close or you want to be right? majority of them out there want to be right how wrong you are, especially the police. Because the more points I score on how many people are wrong, the more I can appease my boss and get my promotion. Excuse me, where's the integrity in that? So, life becomes one for compromise or adaption. We can go into a shop and there's a sale on. We choose what we get. We get what we choose. We go into a shop and there isn't a sale on. We choose what we get. So choose what you get in life. Choose what you want to get out of whatever you're involved in in this legal stuff. Because you've got to remember at the end of the day, lots of people think there are two lives. When you give up that idea and get with the curriculum that there's one life, then your life begins. The thing is, what's in it for you? There's always a cost and there's always a payoff. You can be attached to your case, you can be right how wrong they are. Or, as I was speaking to somebody earlier, blah, 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 blah. I said, well hang on, why don't you reevaluate this case? Go back in, ask their advice, because when you see an enemy, ask their advice, because it's their advice you're taking, they become naturally enrolled. Enroll them back into your project, re-initiate your project, and get the project on the road. Instead of fighting them and going that route, it's only a shift. And you're going to find that when you're involved with projects, it's very easy to get involved with the content of what's going on. You need to create a context bigger than what you're doing to live into, then you don't become at effect and a victim of it. I suffered a heart attack from my shit I got involved. Why? Resisting, resisting fighting, and there was a lot of deviances that were going on with me misleading the core of extreme false statements. My case is still going on 10 years later. I'm not giving it up. It's not about being right. It's about equitable justice. And in your lives, you've got to weigh up the consideration. Last time I was here, I said, oh, what about electricity? Well, electricity, yeah, but how many hours have I had been fighting that stuff? You know, you know, how much is your life worth? If I give you a hundred thousand now, can I take your life? If I give you half a million, can I take your life? 
If I give you a million, can I take your life? So it's not about money, is it? And too many people get attached to money. Money is form. And 95% of people don't reach financial independence by the time they're 65 because they're attached to form. And they say, when I have it, I can be it, I can do it, my life will work out. It doesn't work that way. Watch how it works. In the experience of being thirsty, do what's appropriate, which is go to the cup of tea and have a drink. <laughs> and notice your judgments as I do it. You need to get this judgment. It never stops and it screws you over every time. Stop listening to it. Otherwise, you'll become a victim of circumstances. 10% is what happened. The other 90%, you added it and mixed it up and became right about it and used it as your story to attract attention to yourself and create a drama out of it. You need three things to survive. Love, air, food. If you don't get air, mind comes into operation. If you don't get food, body comes into operation. If you don't get love, you start creating drama to attract attention. Give it up. Stop being attached to looking good. Stop playing the game that everybody else is playing. Fear of non-survival. You survived. Now what? You know, there's a lot of people going around thinking they're special and extraordinary. If everybody's doing that, then it must be ordinary to do it. <laughs> right? So how do you become extraordinary in an ordinary game? You give up playing I'm special, I'm extraordinary, and then you become extraordinary because nobody else wants to play that game. Because they think there's no payoff in it. Once you get that crap out of the way, you're then free to be creative and become a creator of circumstances by creating a context bigger than you out of all the skills you developed in your life. And then you learn to specialize and serve that as a contribution to the world. By doing that, context creates the experience that motivates you, the experience creates the form, which doesn't look a particular way, and the form comes naturally in terms of money, facilities, everything else, as a validation of your contribution. I bid you good day. Oh, sorry, I didn't give you the communication stuff. Every day we have two things. Conversation, communication, relationship. If our communication stinks, our relationships are going to stink. So here's the rules that you learn for. You're doing well at the back. I look at this. Two years old. Clap it. <laughs> okay. Ready? First five rules of communication. Lack of communication leads to frustration, fear, anger, violence. Which can be physical, psychological, emotional. Huh? They did it to me. They were like that. Oh, you don't want to talk to them. They did this to me. Nobody can ever do it to you. You make it up. You blame them. You've got to get this stuff. Understanding is the booby prize. It's about getting it. Like when you put your hand in the flame. You don't understand it's hot. You get it. You've got to get it. It's never about them. Huh? It's all about relationship with you. Who you're being and not being is a direct reflection of what you're manifesting in your life. So, when you notice somebody's getting frustrated or angry, Take responsibility for how effective you're coming across as a communicator and bring it back to communication. Not you, you, you did this to me. I feel. Can I have somebody here as a pop? 
Isn't it an, an example? Tom, I think you're an idiot. <laughs> now, that's a, re that, that, that's a response. Okay? And so many people will say, I'm not an idiot. Buff, 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 buff. So you've got to learn to what makes you think I'm an idiot, Stuart. I'm an idiot. Thank you. Right? So learn to respond, not react. It's the reaction from the emotional psychosomatic incompletion that you swept under the carpet as a child because it was uncomfortable and you didn't want to look there that keeps on coming up sometimes everybody stands on anybody stands on the carpet so what you've done is create yourself in this realm living out of a jungle of incompletions that are not complete that you're taking into your new relationships and you wonder why your relationships are not working hello so it's all about completion with ourselves cleaning up our act, cleaning up our own backyard before we can take that clarity into our new relationship so look for this there are seven further words you need for effective communication if you're moving into argument somebody's not telling the truth okay in their experience I don't get it if you get it, it's what so because the truth needs no reasons, justifications or excuses to support itself it stands on its own merit am I here? hello yeah there's the evidence, the evidence never lies so, the ground rules are one, you have an idea two, you need a person to communicate that idea to three, intention to get the idea across four, attention exactly what I'm doing with you now five, duplication of what they're saying six acknowledgement yes no yes no right? exactly what I've done if you want to ask a question never start with the word why all you'll get is reasons so ask the question like this right? Not, right? idea person idea person Intention, attention, acknowledgement, space. How do you feel about that meeting today? Space. Shut your mouth. They'll tell you everything you want to know. What do you feel about that? Is there anything else you'd like to say? they will vomit it now listen for the word try it comes when somebody is not seriously committed well I tried ok listen for the word but it always comes before a lie use the word and instead and listen for the word because it comes before a reason and you don't need a reason to justify the truth. It stands on its own merit. Yeah. I bid you good day. Thank you. <laughs> Any questions? Yeah. How do you think about your three days in Ireland? My three days in Ireland, um, you can go on to Skype. Uh, search me on Skype, ECH. No? Okay, take my phone number. Zero seven. <laughs> Want that taken off here? Uh, I forget what. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, you can set me up. Send me an email at uh, Stuart is S T U A R T I S at email dot com. That's email. Okay. E for English. Yeah. And I'll do a mail out to everybody. And, yeah. right. and you know the thing is, 
we get everything we want in life. If we didn't get it, we weren't seriously committed. You want to be an island, you'll be there. Because you're committed. You know, commitment's not that heavy thing. You're committed to being here, otherwise you wouldn't be here. That's what it is. But at least you're in the dynamic. Yep. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for coming. Uh, so, someone, another question. Another question. Oh, okay. An absolute brilliant man, Stuart. Um, the only thing I couldn't, I, I had a vision of Stuart just now with a schoolmaster black robe on here looking over his glasses at you saying, You bad people. <laughs> Listen to me, this is how you do it. So, brilliant, thanks. Uh, thanks, Stuart. So, we're winding up now. Um, I hope you enjoy the meeting. It's a bit shorter because we started later. Um, but I hope you all enjoyed it and the next one will be announced when uh, we can get the venue and everything organised. So thank you all for coming and see you next time. Debt Free TV in association with getoutofdebtfree.org